welcome to DVMS course. In this session, we will discuss about entity integrity constraints and referential integrity constraints. So let us start the session. The first one is entity integrity constraints. What entity integrity constraints says? The primary key should not contain null values. So for example, suppose I have a relation with three attributes A, B, C. Now, if we observe the values of attribute A, all the five values are distinct. So, I can say the attribute set with A is a candidate key for this relation instance. For this relation instance. Similarly, attribute C is also having distinct values for all the five records C4, C7, C3, C1, null. So, the candidate key, sorry, the attribute set with C is also an example of a candidate key. Now, according to the definition of primary key, we can select any one of the candidate keys as a primary key. But whenever the candidate key consists of null value, it should not be selected as a primary key. That is the meaning of this constraint. So, here I can select A can be as a primary key, but C should not be selected as a primary key. The next one is a relation can have at most one primary key. That means even if the relation is having more than one candidate key, we can select only one of them as a primary key. The next one is referential integrity constraint. This rule states that if a foreign key in table 1 refers to the primary key of table 2, then every value of primary key in table 1 either must be null or it should be available in table 2. So let me explain with an example. Suppose we have two tables. The first one is student and the second one is department. Okay. First let us consider the table department. This department table is having three attributes. Department ID, department name, black number. Assume that department ID is the primary key for this table. So this is the primary key of the table department. Now this department ID is used by another table. So in such cases we will call this attribute as a foreign key. So this is the scenario of foreign key and primary key. The relation which is having the primary key, the relation in which the primary key is present is called parent table or we can say referred table. And the relation which is using the primary key of another table or in which foreign key is present, that is called child table. Okay, sir. Now, what the rule says is every value of the foreign key either must be null or it should be available in the parent table. So, now coming to the first record 101, it is present in department table. 102, it is present. Null, no issue. 101 it is present, 105 it is not available in department table or parent table. So it is violating referential integrity constraint. So note, a foreign key can have null values, but a primary key should not have null values. According to entity integrity constraint, a primary key should not have null values. If a candidate key is having null values, I should not select it as a primary key. So there is no chance of null values in primary key. But when coming to foreign key, there is a possibility of null values. Either it can be null or it should be available in parent table. Okay. So let us consider the same example. So this is our foreign key. And this is our primary key. The primary key should not have any null values. So, null value in primary key is not allowed. But foreign key can have null values. Either it can have null values or the values must be available in parent table. Is it okay? The next one is when we do some operations on the records of the tables, something like insertion, deletion, updation then there is a possibility of violation of referential integrity constraints. So now let us discuss 
each of these operations and what are the possibilities of violation. Let us consider the same example. Okay, we are having student table and we are having department table. So this is our parent table, sir. This is our parent table. And this is our child table. When we insert a new record in parent table, there is no chance for violation. There is no chance for violation. I can insert the records of my own choice. So I can insert a record like 105, mechanical, and some block number B2. Like that, I can insert any record. So if you insert records in parent table, there is no chance for violation of referential integrity constraint. But when we insert records in child table, there is a possibility or there is a chance of violation for referential integrity constraint. For example, suppose I am trying to insert a record with values 77, PVP, some 22. And let us suppose that the department ID is 108. But if we observe this 108 is not available in parent table. So it is violating our constraint. So when we insert a record in parent table, there is no chance for violation. But when coming to child, there is a possibility of violation. Sir, it doesn't mean that always it violates. If instead of 108, if I have written 101, there is no violation, sir. Since 108 is not available in parent table, there is a violation. The next one is when we delete the records of table, what are the possibilities of violation for referential integrity constraints? Consider the same example, sir. When we in delete, when we delete the record of the parent table, so this is parent. This is child. When we delete, suppose we deleted the record 102. When we delete this record, then if the department ID 102 is not used anywhere in the child table, then there is no problem, sir. There is no violation. But if the department ID is used by some record in the child table, then it is violating our constraint. Here, the 102 is used by record 2. So, it is violating our referential integri integrity constraint. Is that clear, sir? Now, let us suppose that I am deleting a record here. If I delete the record, student record 44 MSR 25101, there is no issue. If a student left my department, there is no problem to my department. So, there is no chance for violation if I delete. But when we delete in the parent table, there is a chance for violation. There is a chance means there is a possibility for violation or then there is, sometimes it may not be violated or sometimes it may be violated. The next one is when updating the records of the table. Let us consider the same example. Okay, when we update the records of parent table or child table, what are the possibilities of violating integrity constraints? For example, let us consider first the parent table, sir. Suppose I am updating the first record. Instead of 101, I want to write, um, let me write it here, sir. Instead of 101, I want to write 311. Okay. So I updated the record 311 CSC B1. Now, what about here, sir? Now 101 is not available in our parent table because we already updated it. Then if I don't update the child table entries, then there is a violation of integrity constraints. If you update, there is no issue, sir. But if you don't update the child entries, then since the department ID 101 is not available here, there is a violation. Suppose the 101 is not used by any record, then there is no problem. Suppose, so in parent table, when we update, there is a chance for violation. There is a chance for violation. Now suppose that we are updating. Okay, let me update this record.
Suppose we are updating the fifth record, 55 MGR 29103. Instead of 103, suppose I updated to 130 or some 150. Then if this department ID is available in parent table, then there is no issue, sir. If that ID is not available in parent table, then there is a violation. So when we update the records of child table, then there is a chance for violation. So for updation operation, there is a chance for violation both in parent table as well as in child table. Is that fine, sir? Now, when there is a violation for these operations, what we can do or what are the actions we supposed to take? These are three possible actions, sir. The first one is reject and the second one is cascade and the third one is set null value or some specific value. So let us discuss each of these actions one by one. The first one is reject. Consider the same operation. Okay. Now, when we insert a record, when we insert a record, here there is no issue. When we insert a record, there is no issue. But when we insert a record here, there is an issue. If there is an issue, for example, suppose I am trying to insert a record 66 PVP, some 22, some 105. Since the department ID 105 is not available in parent table, it will violate my constraint. So whenever the insertion of a record is violating the constraint, simply I will reject that insertion operation. So I don't allow that operation to be updated in the database. So we will reject that operation. For example, delete. Suppose I am deleting a record. Suppose I am deleting this record 103. So we are deleting the record. Okay. If this department ID is not used in child table, then there is no issue, sir. But here 103 is used in fifth record. So that means there is a violation for constraint. So whenever the deletion of a record is causing the violation, then we will simply reject the operation. So when we insert or delete a record, if it is violating our constraint, we will reject the operation. The next one is cascade. The cascade is mainly used when we perform the operations delete or update. Suppose we are having this one, sir. Okay. So first let me explain update. Suppose this 101 is updated to triple one. So one minute. This 101 is updated to triple one. When we update the record of a parent table, then that value must be reflected in all the records where we used the department ID 101. So here I used 101. It should be updated to triple one. Similarly, this also should be updated to triple one. So that is the meaning of cascade. So whenever there is an updation in the record of the parent table, that update must be reflected in each and every record of child table where we use the corresponding entry. So that is a possibility for update. Then what about delete? Suppose I am deleting the record 103. If I am deleting the record 103 in parent table, then all the records in child table who are using 103, they must be deleted. So here the fifth record is using 103. So according to cascade, this record should be deleted. So that is about delete operation. So when coming to update, if I update any record in the parent table, that update must be reflected in each and every record of child table where we are using the updated entry. Similarly, if I delete any record in the parent table, I need to delete the corresponding records in the child table also. So that is about cascade operation. The next one is set null value or some other value. Generally, this action will be used when we do delete operation. For example, let us consider the same story. Suppose I am deleting, I am deleting the record 103. I am deleting this 103. So that means 103 is no more available. Then according to cascade, I need to delete the records 
the records which are using 103. But instead of third, that one, if I follow the third action, that is signal value, I don't delete the record, sir. 103 is not available, right? So I will place null value. I will place null value. So instead of null value, you can give your lucky number or some specific value, something like 999 or 49. So when we delete a record in the parent table, if any record in the child table is using that particular attribute, then in that place, we place null values. Instead of deleting the entire record, we simply place null values. This is our third action. Now let us solve one previous question, sir. Let R is a relation with three attributes A, B, C and S is a relation with three attributes D, E, F in which D is a foreign key. D is a foreign key of S. That refers to the primary key of R. Now, first let me explain up to here. We are having mainly two tables, sir. One is R and the second one is S. I have a table R with three attributes A, B, C. Fine. And we have one more table, three attributes D, E, F. Fine. Up to here it is clear. Now, D is the foreign key. So, this is our foreign key. Which refers to the primary key of the parent table. But here they have not mentioned what is the attribute that is the primary key. So, let us assume this is our primary key. Okay. Now, S is the table in which foreign key is present. So, according to this, this is our referring table or child table. So, this is the relation in which I have primary key. So, this is our parent table or referred table. Clear, sir? Now, consider the following operations. Insert into R, insert into S, insert into R, insert into S. Delete from R, delete from S. So mainly they are considering two operations. One is insertion, the second one is deletion. Which of the following can cause violation of referential integrity constraint? So they are mainly discussing with two operations are one is insert. When we insert a record in parent table, there is no possibility of violation, sir. I can insert the records of my own choice. But when coming to child table, if I insert a record and if the value of foreign key is not available in primary key of the parent table, then there is a possibility of violation. Yes, there is a possibility of violation. What about delete, sir? When we delete a record of child table, there is no issue for violation. But when coming to here, if I delete a record in parent table, and if that primary key attribute value is used by some records of the child table, then there is a violation for our constraint. So here there is a possibility of the violation. So now let me check the options. So coming to insert into R, so there is no issue, sir. So this will not give any violation. When coming to insert into S, yes, yes, there is a violation. Delete from R, S, yes, there is a violation and delete from S, yes, there is no chance. So only the operations 2 comma 3 can cause violation. So this is our answer. Is it fine, sir? So this is about integrity constraints. In next session, we will start a new chapter, normalization. Thank you.